Hi YouTube. I hope you're doing good. I'm doing great, actually. Not too bad today. Um, yesterday I had watched a really good um, uh, Professor Dr. Sam Vaknin video with, um, I think her name is pronounced Nama, or it's N-A-I-M-A, -A. Mukhtar, I think is how you say her name. But um, they were talking about narcissism and um, an unusual perspective. And they were talking about, um, which I shared in my community, by the way, and over on Facebook. You're more than welcome to join me there or wherever. But, um, so the, the, the links to that are in there, but the conversation, um, went into genders and how, like, uh, genders are sort of like drifting apart and they have before in cultures and different societies and that type of thing, but, I don't know the it it to me unusual is really putting it mildly compared to I mean it wouldn't be so bad if a lot of people weren't confused but I don't know I just see where everybody's ending up the same like like a eunuch you know it's like so everybody's like unified like the same type of personality and whatever and men and women aren't getting together like they used to i've noticed that a lot of you are just downright afraid of each other um not that i blame you right before i pushed play i was thinking well i'm just gonna tell them go for it what can you lose? And then I'm thinking things I've lost. Oh, um, like your home or your kids or with, you know, um, people interfering or whatever. I mean, a lot, of, you can lose a lot. You could lose your sanity. You could lose your life. Your kid could lose their life. So yeah, picking the wrong partner in this world we live in could actually be a really dangerous prospect now. Well, any time. Uh, yeah, speaking from experience, any time, <laughs> at any age. So, yeah, Squatch said, I, I, I don't know if, um, like, the dating scene for people, I don't think it's really any worse than... From in my days, it's just that I think we were more active out in society than people are now. Maybe we were more apt to make the wrong connections anyway, you know, with the rate of divorce and that type of thing. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that's just kind of like I always do, just talking out loud and, you know. Or, you have people like me, um, long-term relationship now, and my, the father of my sons was long enough, almost a decade. Well, I married, but we had been together for, oh, like five years before I, I was told I couldn't even have children. And we prayed, and I had my first son. Then I had another one a few years later. But, um, I don't know. So, so yeah, people, I mean, sure, you go through struggles in the world and that type of thing. And it's not settling. I will, I will never settle for less than what I feel I want or deserve in my life. And working with people, that's why, like, with Doug and I, I gave him the letter of a divorcement. 
in an estranged marriage. I mean, we were more being he's very narcissistic, and I can be too, but I mean, I'm talking extreme measures. And um, that brings me into another video that I'm watching with Professor Sam Backman right now is um, he's talking about the connection between narcissism and um, uh, autism, which is really uh, interesting to me, that, that prospect, because um, my step-grandson is uh, autistic, and I know that sometimes that will come off as appearing like a narcissist, you know, like their distant nature and stuff, but he's far from cold-hearted. He just doesn't, he doesn't have a heart. No, he just, he can't express what is in there like other people can. And narcissists are much the same. But um, yesterday with this lady that um, Sam, Professor Sam was talking to, they started talking about, oh, like genders and um sexuality and I mean they covered a broad spectrum of what people are going through um just super interesting if you're if you're into um thoughts of the mind or any kind of psychology or um you know that type of thing uh I think he's one of the best Oh, he starts out, um, now today, I don't know if he's meaning, like, um, a separation from the Jews or the Gentiles or the separation in the, their holy books or a two-part system. Um, he's, like, something about his video and having two parts to it because he's Jewish. I'm a little lost. I'm I'm not I'm not into I've never practiced Judaism. I studied it. My adopted parents were that bloodline. I mean, I am of their bloodline, the same family tree. Like I tell you, I'm just lower on the totem pole because um yeah polluted bloodlines, I guess, is what they would see it as, you know. So, anyway, I think I'm uh, a goy. <laughs> Goyum, you know, golem. <laughs> no, not quite that bad, I don't think. But anyway, so he's a really interesting channel if you're into that type of thing. And you really never know what he's going to talk about either because, yeah, it's all concerning like the mind or um he wouldn't consider himself a religious person at all because he's a scientist so he's in the frame of mind where science and um you know you can't see god so you can't prove the science of it to me uh there is no science without the one true God, so, you know, and that's his science, so that's just my outlook on it, so when I approach anything scientific, I'm thinking of the miraculous nature of that, um, whatever it is, if we're dealing with substances or elements or whatever it is, I'm looking at the, um, like, it's amazing that God put all the chemicals that are necessary on this planet to even make things that are synthetic that can copy what is something that is natural, you know, like, um, oh, just say like adrenaline or, you know, that type of thing. So that's pretty cool to me that science can emulate nature like a melatonin you can get a natural melatonin or you can get it synthetic you know so i'm anyway
yeah, there's going to probably be some noise. Um, Doug's out in front uh, um, leveling off the place where our sunroom greenhouse slash greenhouse will be. And we've almost got all the building materials except for the roof that we're going to need. We just have to um, go get some other great big timbers, I think, on Thursday. So we're well on our way to making this happen. So anyway, so back to the point um, where, let me see, what was my point? And then I go and I hear a noise. I, I lost it. Give me a second. I'll get back there, you know. My letter of divorce meant not settling for something less than what I want. It was like an a business arrangement type of marriage. I mean, most men that I have encountered in my life, um, you know, said like men only want one thing. That's not really quite true. Um, they actually require a whole lot more than just one thing. A lot of times I have found in my um life <laughs> my i i um had my first marriage annulled i was married at 17 i i was um at that time i had what i called divorce the masons i had uh, got emancipated by the state it was a long process but it took me from 15 to 17 for the papers to finally go through and then I made my first uh, jump into wanting to um, have a family, I thought, and wasn't with him very long. It was really, um, I'm not just saying because he was an ex-cop or military or been in war or whatever that he was like whacked, but and maybe a lot to do with his heritage, which I won't speak of because I don't want to offend anybody, but different cultures have things that they do, and sometimes it's just not compatible in certain ways with other people. Just It just wasn't. So anyway, and then I met the father of my children at 18, just had turned 18, and we were together for too long, in my eyes. So... Anyway, I ended up, uh, yeah, having to kick him out. I I got a house, bought a house, just uh, have some place safe for my children and and that stuff because he was also. Well, if it hadn't been, and I don't know that that this is true or if it has anything to do with it. But I really do blame, like, cocaine and alcohol and everything else when you mix everything. Well, when life's a party and that comes before your family, that's a problem. You either want your party or you want your family. You don't do both. You know, I'm not saying you can't party at all if you have a family, but you have to be responsible for your children. Somebody had to be there. And, and give them a schedule of going to bed and getting up and the normal things that people do in life with their children. So, yeah, I had two sons, and now I've got um, four granddaughters, two stepsons, and, um, yeah, my stepdaughter, yes, with my step-grandsons, yes. So, anyway. So, yeah, back to the estranged thing. Sometimes, you know, oh, well, you know, and Doug was reading a meme to me yesterday that I had seen before that I do think is really funny. That if you love, love somebody, set them free. And if they come back, set them free again because it means nobody else wanted them or something like that, you know. That is a little humorous, I think. You know, so, Chase, I got an itch. I think it's my hair. But anyway.
um, yeah, so I wanted to make it so he can do whatever he wants to do. Being narcissistic like that, he wouldn't have to feel like he's indebted to me at all. And I never, ever wanted a man to do something for me without me participating in the giving and sharing in that relationship. It's just not in me to get something from somebody without a even exchange. So, yeah. Cheers to everybody. <laughs> so. But, you know, it's like I saw a meme and, and it sounded cool to me. I mean, it said um, something about like she wanted a boyfriend, but she just wanted him in his own house, in her own house. That, that's, that's a cool arrangement, I think. It's like this is sort of my part of the house, you know, really. So I can relate to that. I mean... It wasn't really, and it's not even a point of being incompatible or, or anything like that. It has to do with my moral values versus uh, somebody else's uh, lacking in that area. I'm a little different than a lot of people. They'll cover up. See, no, it's just like another meme I saw. It's like, yeah, I, I cuss quite a bit sometimes, but um, I'd rather cuss out loud than move like a snake in my heart, and I can relate to that. I don't really care what anybody thinks beyond that, because I know how snaky people are. They'll get out there. They'll put on that lily white smile their little white shirt or whatever <laughs> you get my get my gist and um pretend that they're actually something they're not but what are they inside see that's why i specialize in on that inside stuff where i can see where people don't want me to see you know that that bothers them for some reason i don't know why but it does <laughs> you know I'm sure you've met people that you can just relate to on that telepathic level that you really don't have to speak words. And if you do speak words, if you say something wrong, they're going to know. They're going to know you're not saying it the way it is because they can see inside your head like that, you know. Or, you know, it's like a friend or a family member or whatever that unspoken communication that you can have with someone without any words being spoken. Well, in a lot of ways in my life, I get sick of that unspoken language that everybody wants to draw off of and have those wonderful conversations while they're um, functioning on another level with other human beings and it leaves me like I'm not even human to them, you know. They're more human than human. You know, good song, isn't it? But, <laughs> yeah. I watched and I um, uh, will be interested to see what's coming up in the future. I had just um, subbed to a channel. Her name is Emily Moyer. And she had a really good conversation with um uh Amon Hillman and and for some people you know they're turned off with if you say like Dr. Amon Hillman he he left the establishment I know like Jason from Archaics is not really interested in um interviewing anybody with a PhD before their name and I get it. I truly get it. I couldn't even work with those people. And, um, no. Uh, 
like in the school system and hospitals and whatever. Yeah, I understand, you know, but when somebody goes, bucks the whole system and the establishment to make their point and to get information out, not even to make his point, to actually get the information out that people need to, to get about our um, ancient languages and scriptures that have been twisted and all the lies that have been told um, concerning all that and people, all of them, millions of people that are deceived. When you buck a system, um, you're more than a doctor. You're a superhero, you know. So I would have liked to seen the conversation between Amin and Jason for the mere fact that Jason knows the ancient Greek plays a lot into that. He knows the chronology and the history and the movement and migration of people in their languages. And just to have those two correlating minds with the um, uh, chronology of the time and all that would have been a really cool thing to see, I think. But, um, like I say, Jason doesn't realize that Amon um, is so anti-establishment. If he knew what they had done to him, um, he would change his mind. And what he did back to them, yeah, he'd like him for it. But, I, you know, I can't force somebody to see something I don't see or they don't see, you know. So, that's, anyway. <laughs> so. oh, and I'm going to look more into uh, Emily Moyer. I like her. I like, she said something that was so cool. She was talking about, um, she um, was a, or still dances. I love dance too. And, and um, like break dancing and popping. And she had been into gymna gym missed when she was a kid and some things I have like in common with her like that and uh, um, she was talking about like different dance moves that she do like she, when you're in the zone like it's almost it's almost like a gift from God she didn't word it like that or the muse or it's something like super special that people will see and like they'll just stop to watch and you don't have to be the most spectacular dancer on the planet but you have like this gift inside yourself that people would recognize you know and so i can relate you know i love dance all kinds of dance every one of them i Try, well, when I was growing up in our, in our elementary school, we learned languages and um, musical instruments. We tried like every single musical instrument on the planet. If you can imagine that my little school in Minneapolis had all these instruments behind the stage in, in, the, um, in our auditorium, there was a music room, and um, I mean, this was phenomenal. And the books and the music books and the song books and, you know, like uh, pianos on uh, more than one level of the school. I mean, the music that was involved in the dance and, I mean, everything from waltzing, two steps, tangos, um, square dancing, uh, Swahili. I mean, we learned it all, all of it. Minuets, you know, um, it was incredible along with the languages and the songs in different languages that we learned. And it was a super cool education that I know kids aren't getting educated in the arts like we did. Wow, it was amazing. I mean, we were doing things like fencing and boxing, pole vaulting. I mean, 
there really wasn't anything we didn't do as kids in my school. It was a trip, but yeah, we did everything. So, yeah, I, I'd like to see the school systems going back to um, at least having access for everybody to, you know, I like, that's one thing I like about China. When when a kid reaches a certain level and, and or if they're not in a category of another student or whatever, they they take that child, they work with that child where that child is at. We don't do that in our school systems. I mean, we kind of do in a sense if it's special needs, like when I was working um, at a sheriff's boys ranch, uh, the girls would come from the main school during the day and whatever, and kids that needed help like that, uh, preteen, adolescent, that age, and they can be a little, little rough around the edges, but um, they'll get special attention. But uh, kids don't really get get anything outside of that if they're struggling in any way. They're uh, really left out in the cold or. They're, they're put into like a special needs situation, which is like a big stamp of a label on their head. I screwed up in my uh, oh, seventh and eighth grade. Uh, I ended up in, well, uh, I was in, what was that? Detention so many times from different things going on in my life, running away and whatever, and getting behind on my homework and then skipping school and different things, getting in trouble. And uh, so I was put into like what, like a remedial reading. And then I kind of advanced out of that into my English literature in eighth grade. But for a while there, I was really struggling and I could see how kids could be like all balled up into one certain situation when that's really not where they belong at all, you know. So anyway, yeah, our school system does fail our kids, that's for sure. I took, I finally just took my, when my youngest son was 11, I took him out and got him into a, a secluded school, <laughs> a private, more private situation. Because I, I uh, well, I had to have, I had a state psychologist fired and one, uh, she was a special needs worker too, the one uh, with a psych psychiatric degree and psychology. I had her fired. I called the school, the state, the head of the state. And I, I was pissed, too, because of the things that they were doing and saying and having studied that all my life, too. It's like, yeah, okay. But I saw different situations going on with kids with spe special needs in the school systems that I thought they were doing it the wrong way. I think I proved my point, too. I ended up, I have a little community. I ended up writing an article in the paper I had. Well, I, I'll i just say it like it is. All the slutty people around me hate my fucking guts. If they're not like that, they didn't have a problem with me. Probably wouldn't even know who I am. But the ones that a absolutely know who I am, yeah. They hated me. So it was really hard to work around my community, too, um, a lot of the time. <laughs> because of my personality. So I just, I made it worse for them. I have, like, I got this three-piece skirt suit. No, really beautiful light pink with embroidery on it. And I would wear my little white blouse with it. It was like three-quarter arm and three-quarter length. And real classy, but bright. And I got it specifically to wear into um, parent-teachers conference 
and um, uh, that type of thing. You know, that's how I would like dress going in to talk to them, the school board and whatever. Because they hated me anyway. I watched a really good show last night. Well, I mean, it wasn't super excellent, but it was uh, 1947 or 8 black and white called Daughter of Darkness. And she was an Irish girl that had uh, grew up in, uh, oh, like a, she was an indentured servant in the Catholic Church for the priests. And the women in the community, she was a pretty girl compared to them, you know, <laughs> or whatever, you know. But these females treated her really bad, really bad. They wanted her out of there because of the way their men were looking at her like that, like she could actually do something about that, you know. So this priest had her sent away, and she ended up on this farm where she was um, an indentured servant also. And um, just throughout the whole thing, I think, it, you know, if she had been guided with love from from the first onset of these old bags treating her like that, um, I mean, they had her their day in the sun. Why not leave her alone? What those men do, you know, if like a man looks at a, a young girl, that's not the girl's fault. And if they're with some man that's going to do something like that, we'll get rid of the man, not the poor girl. So if I think like um, a woman like me had been around and had taken her aside and said, look, this is um, the way, like I did with my stepdaughter. Uh, sometimes people are just mean to you because you have that certain something or that spark or something that other people don't have. And my stepdaughter was getting like bad in anxiety in life, um, just having to deal with people. And I lived through that. And, but, um, I probably, maybe I won't tell you the rest of the story. It's called Daughter of Darkness. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there if you want to look it up. It, it's, I think it's worth a watch because of the psychological aspect of the whole thing of just how grody them old bitches were to that girl. I mean, um... If you've lived through it, you've lived, lived through it. You, you'll know what I'm saying. So anyway. And at first you kind of think, well, um, you might even feel sorry for this girl um, towards the end. And then you wonder, um, could it been stopped? What happened? You know. Makes you wonder how, how a person could turn. Can you turn dark? because of things that happen to you in your life? Or is there something in you that's dark, that doesn't need to be nourished, that is just there, that's going to surface anyway? That's what I think. I think um, if you're dark inside like that, it's going to surface and it doesn't need to be nurtured. It's just like if you're a kind-hearted person, and you really are. There, there's nothing that people can say or do to take that away from you. I mean, temporarily, yeah, you probably like blow your top if you get like poked in the same spot a hundred times. Pretty soon, you're gonna slap that hand away and say, "Do it again." I'm gonna like jack you, <laughs> you know. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. Just, just my thoughts on that. So. I'm going to get this uploaded. I really do appreciate you joining me. If, like you, like I say, if you're into uh, mental health care and the psychology of gender and the way things are in this world in particular now, um, you might want to 
listen to Professor Sam's video from yesterday that, um, like I say, it's called, just a minute here, I'll give you, um, Narcissism, Unusual Perspective with Nam, Naima, Nama, Na, Naima, I'm thinking, Mok Talk, M O K H T A R. But it's, it's, um, let me just a moment here. Uh, I'll get the, um, he's got two channels. That's why I'm checking here to make sure he's got, um, nothingness to narcissism or the other way around. That's one of his channels. This is Professor Sam Vakton, V A K. N I N. So, um, or like I say, I've got his got his this video I'm talking about in particular from yesterday in my community. So, and like I say, the one from today is super interesting al already. It's um, the autism spectrum disorder. Uh, so, and that is a. Uh, um, quite a deep thought because I've thought really too, unless somebody's actually psychopic and like sadistic, which is our new, instead of it used to be the triad, it's the tetrad of the dark personality disorders. They added sadism to that. So, um, yeah, so not all narcissists are sadistic. But I think they're pretty much, this is my opinion, they're all psychopic. And I, and here's, here's something too they were speaking about yesterday. Professor Sam is kind of on the, on the level of thinking that I am that, um, Pretty much, I mean, except for, for like trauma responses and whatever, uh, mental illness actually isn't a uh, mental illness. It's more life choices and responses to things that have happened. And I've noticed this too, working with uh, the handicap, whether it be physical or uh, emotional, mentally handicapped or physical like if it's a physical thing like down syndrome or something you know but if it's actually an emotional thing and then the care that's involved with people that have like responses to how we react in life and whatever that's what um people talking about these types of things that's what we care about is the people in the world and um, helping them overcome some rough spots, you know, that type of thing. So, yeah, a really good channel. Excellent, excellent for that type of thing. And the guests that he has or that have him too, they're all really cool people for the most part, I think. So, all right. Thank you for joining me. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Have a good night or day wherever you're at.